in talking about ways, there's a, a couple of things that we need to make sure that we are familiar with in definition-wise. This is a simulation. It's going to show us uh, waves at different frequencies. Uh, I'm going to keep the amplitude the same. The other damping and tension we're going to ignore for right now. So we're going to start off with a frequency of 17. And you'll notice that it takes a little bit for this wave to get started, but we eventually get to the point where we see uh, a maximum, what we would call amplitude. That would be a distance above or below that midline. That would be the dashed line that the, the wave is uh, runs through the middle of the wave. And we can see that if I pause this, we have what we would consider to be one wave. It's got a trough and it's got a crest. The trough is on the left side and the crest is on the right. If I change the frequency, and we're going to make it uh, 33, you'll see here that the motion of the wave going up and down is quicker. That is the frequency. You know, how many waves in a certain amount of time are we going to get? And since we increase the frequency, we are going to have more waves in the same amount of time as what we had before when we had it set at 17. You'll also notice that we have more waves in this instance where <clears throat> we've got more crests and troughs. Now the wavelength would be the distance between two similar points on a wave. In this case, the distance between a crest and a crest or a trough and a trough is going to be a wavelength. Another way of defining it is the distance between any two similar points on the wave will also consist of a wavelength. And what we mean by this is that uh, even though there may be multiple intersections on that midline, we can see that there are similar points here and here because the, the, if you look at the direction of this, this is on the upward slope as well as this is on the upward slope. So this area and this area would be similar points on the wave and would con the distance between those two points would consist of the wavelength. The distance between this and, point and this point are not similar because this is again on the upward slope, this is on the downward slope of the wave. I'm gonna reset the frequency one more time to 50 and restart this and we'll see again that we have get even more, uh, the, the motion up and down is even faster. We also get more waves, and we see now that we have a total of one, two, three waves, whereas before at 17, we had only one complete wave. One other thing to consider here is that I chose these numbers, or the frequency values, for a specific reason, and that is because these values gave us what we call a standing wave. That means that we have a wave that has definite points on it that are going to be uh, where areas where the crest is going to be in the trough. Also definite points where we would have what we consider nodes, the areas of the wave that cross the midpoint that are going to stay the same. If I were to change this to any other value besides the ones I have entered or some multiple of those values, let's say for instance I change this to 54 we'll see that we don't get a standing wave. It looks like what we would get is, uh, it looks like the same right now, but you'll see here that all of a sudden it becomes flat. We get a wave, it looks like it's going to start again, but then again it gets flat again. We never get the same amplitude. Uh, we never get the same points staying the same uh, location. We get the, the, the crest and trough keeps moving. Uh, the nodes are, uh, keep changing as well. So this is not a standing wave. Uh, waves can only occur, or the, the, we have to have a special set of conditions for a standing wave to occur. And one of those is having a, the frequency and wavelength match up to a specific combination to have a standing wave. And at a frequency of 54, we can't get that with this uh, string as it's set up. 